A warm welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. This week, President Mamadou Buhari is in the UK leading an African delegation to the first ever UK-Africa Investment Summit in London. During the summit, which begins on Monday, January 20th, President Buhari is expected to hold other meetings with investors in manufacturing, mineral resources and investment and technology. I had a chat with the UK's Deputy High Commissioner in Lagos, Ms. Harriet Thompson, on what to expect at the summit and whether this has anything to do with Britain's exit from the European Union this month. Plus, Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Jeff Bunyama, in an extraordinary briefing to members of the Diplomatic Corps, calls on diplomats to relate with the presidency through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Partners for Prosperity is the theme for the UK-Africa Investment Summit holding in London this week. The UK says it wants to create new, lasting partnerships to deliver more investments, jobs and growth, and that it wants the UK to be the partner of choice for Africa. President Mamadou Buhari is already in the UK leading the African delegation. The summit is expected to highlight new perspectives on UK-Africa Partnership for Prosperity, issues of sustainable finance and infrastructure, trade and investment, future African growth sectors, and clean energy and climate. On the side of the summit, President Buhari will be holding a meeting with the head of the Commonwealth of Prince Charles in Glasgow, Scotland. Members of his delegation will have bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Boris Johnson, as well as heads of multilateral organizations. We expect him back by Thursday this week. And last week, the UK Deputy High Commission in Lagos held a press briefing to update on the summit. The investors need better infrastructure. They cite this as their biggest obstacle to doing business in Nigeria. Real, reliable estimates put the figure that's needed at around $36 billion a year for Nigeria to reach its potential. That's in transport, in energy access, and in sanitation. Infrastructure needs more direct FDI. It can only be paid for by building revenue resources. And the best way to do that is to build tax revenues from sectors other than oil, including agriculture, manufacturing, and mineral mining. The Africa Investment Summit offers Nigeria the chance to make its pitch to leaders of around 300 UK businesses, including our very top companies, as well as other companies from right across the continent of Africa. Development assistance, such as that provided by DFID and other donors, is not going to lift Nigeria out of poverty. There is a critical role to be played by the private sector, and this is really being acknowledged at the UK-Africa Investment Summit. In the five years after the UK-Africa Investment Summit, DFID will invest over £200 million into prosperity, macroeconomic reform, and private sector growth and development initiatives. We already have a range of initiatives and, and programs, and I'd just like very briefly to mention some of those, just to give you an idea of how the UK is already engaged in working with and supporting um, Nigeria to be able to develop through the private sector out of poverty and into, into growth. We have a major infrastructure program, which is also going to be central to the UK Africa Investment Summit offer that we're making, um, called NIAF. We're working in the agricultural sector through a program called PropComs, which is working with value change in the agriculture, value chains in the agricultural sector. Um, a large proportion of, of Nigeria's employed people work within the agricultural sector but there are real ways in which we can improve through innovation, through technology, through infrastructure development, through cold chains, the productivity of the agricultural sector to employ even more people and to increase um, export capability for the Nigerian economy. I go talking with the Deputy High Commissioner, Ms. Harriet Thompson, on how both the UK and Nigeria can make the most out of the summit. 
Deputy High Commissioner Harriet Thompson, thank you for speaking with me on Diplomatic Channel. And, um, well, this is my first interview with you. So how are you enjoying Nigeria and Lagos in particular? I enjoy Nigeria very much. I've been here since 2016, first as our Deputy High Commissioner in Abuja and then moved down to Lagos in July. And I'm really enjoying it with the contrast between Lagos and Abuja is quite striking. We're enjoying the change. Let's talk about the summit now and the timing of it. It's happening the same month that your Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, says the UK will be leaving the European Union. Yeah, and I think that timing is, is key and it's very deliberate. This is the first major international engagement that our new government under Boris Johnson after the elections in December will be hosting. Uh, and it, as you say, it comes a week and a half before we leave the European Union. Now that's a great sign for my government to be giving about its intention as we leave the European Union. We will still be a major global player. Um, and particularly, we want to think again about our relationship with the continent of Africa. Uh, and that's what this summit is all about. It's about growing that relationship. It's a relationship of partnership and particularly it's about bringing our private sector into that relationship. Are there other sectors of the economy that you are hoping would have greater visibility during the summit? I know you've spoken there about investment, manufacturing and climate change. So are there others that you hope will have greater visibility during the summit? So those are the areas that the summit's going to be focused on uh, and there are a series of events that will happen prior to the summit and after the summit where there will be the opportunity to really talk in detail between the, the private companies, the investors and the government representatives who are relevant to get those concrete deals developed and the money flowing, the, the partnership flowing, uh, the, the exchange of expertise, of technology and so on. Um, it's Nigeria's opportunity to make its pitch to that audience. We've got around 300 British companies taking part, and that includes some of our biggest companies at the very highest levels. Nigeria has the opportunity to tell those people that Nigeria is about far more than oil and gas, which I think we know. I think more and more people are becoming aware that, for example, tech contributes more to GDP in Nigeria than does oil and gas. This is Nigeria's opportunity to tell that to the, that audience of quality investors in the UK. What are the expectations of the summit for the UK from African countries? Yeah, and we should be clear about that. We're not just doing this for the benefit of Nigeria and the other African countries who will be present. This is about the UK's interest as well. The UK wants to be the biggest quality investor in the continent of Africa, and this is a key milestone to achieving that. Now, what do we mean by quality investor? So with the investment comes the expertise, comes the knowledge transfer, the technology transfer, and that's what's going to bring the real benefit to Nigeria and to the other countries who will be participating at the summit. It's not just about the money, it's about that wider uh, relationship that goes around that. Uh, this is expected to be a win-win for Britain and for Africa. Uh, the British government has set a target for Britain to be the largest G7 investor in Africa by 2022. How much of this expectation has already been met and then how does Africa win? commercial relationship with Africa is growing all the time and with Nigeria indeed we saw a 40% increase uh, in the value of our commercial relationship from 2017 through to 2018 so that's significant growth and we're starting at, uh, at an impressive baseline actually so in 2018 uh, the value of our two-way trade relationship was at 5.5 billion pounds sterling that's very significant the stock of investment over 4 billion pounds sterling so it's already a, a strong base. Um, but as we move forward, you've heard many economists talk about how this is going to be uh, the, the centenary, the, 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 um, the decade, the time for um, economic transformation across the continent of Africa. And of course, the UK wants to be a part of that. We want to be positioning our companies so that they're able to take advantage of that. And that will be to the benefit of the Nigerian companies um, and the other African countries that I've mentioned, uh, for the reasons I've mentioned, but also for the UK, because that will create jobs, it will create economic growth in the UK at the same time. Does the UK AIS recognise that African countries are also trying to trade amongst themselves? So, um, 
how does the summit then align with the goals of the EFCFTA so that you know, or, or will they run parallel to each other? Well in fact there'll be a session that's focused on trade and investment and one part of that session will be looking at the potential that is created by the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and trying to understand and unpack some of the issues, some of the challenges that we need to in order for that agreement to really realise its potential. If that agreement is implemented in the way that's intended it stands to really, really rocket the, the amount of trade that happens between African countries. That's good for those countries, but it also facilitates con um, trade between the African continent and markets across the world. About a month ago, some Francophone countries in West Africa adopted the ECO. Would that be a factor for investment in Africa? So, I mean, we need to see how that's going to play out. It's very, very early days and it's an important and a very significant step for those countries to have taken. It will be really fascinating to see how that currency develops, how that affects trade across the continent, particularly this part of the continent, um, but also with the wider international market as well. So let's see. And finally, uh, what happens after the summit? African leaders have no problems attending you know, these summits. They hold them all the time. But applying the lessons here is the problem. So how does the UK keep those leaders accountable? Yeah, so we're absolutely clear that the summit is a milestone. It's by no means an end point. And indeed, a huge amount of work has happened between our government players, the UK and Nigeria, but also between our private sector. The relationships are already strong. The challenge for me and my team here in Nigeria is to build on the momentum that's generated by the summit to make sure that those conversations, the relationships are seen through to concrete deals because that's what's going to create the economic growth and the job creation that we want to see. So we're talking with the government at both federal and state level, we're talking with the private sector to see how we can maintain and build on the momentum through the course of 2020 and indeed beyond.